Welcome back, everybody. Vanguard ETFs are known for their great performance and low expense ratios. And there are three in particular that are among the most popular, talked about, and recommended ETFs out there. VTI, Vanguard's Total Stock Market Index ETF. VOO, Vanguard's S&P 500 Index ETF. And VGT, Vanguard's Information Technology Index ETF. But believe it or not, there's a common mistake that people are making with them. And in this video, we're going to break down the problem and talk about what you can do about it. But first, let's do a quick test. Let's say you plan to invest in Vanguard's ETF and you allocate a third of your money into each of these three. And between the three of them, VTI has 3,824 total holdings in it. VOO has 505 total holdings in it, and VGT has 319 total holdings in it. So you're probably thinking, nice, I have a well-diversified portfolio, and I'm invested in three high-quality ETFs. Things are looking good, right? Well, on the surface, it might look like you're diversified, but actually over 11% of your portfolio is tied up in one company, Apple. Wait, what? The indexes that these ETFs track are market value weighted indexes. That means that each holding is weighted based on its relative market cap. And since Apple is the most valuable company by market cap at $2.75 trillion, it holds the most weight in all three of those ETFs. In VTI, it accounts for 6.66% of the fund. In VOO, it accounts for 6.96% of the fund. And in VGT, it accounts for a whopping 21.26% of the fund. So just because an ETF holds hundreds or even thousands of stocks doesn't necessarily mean that you're well diversified. You have to look at what stocks it holds and also the weight that it has on those stocks. And this is why understanding how your different ETFs overlap each other is so important. Because even in this example with three different ETFs, you're invested in a lot of the same things. Let me show you what I mean. And for this example, I'm going to be using ETFRC.com and their fund overlap tool. And if we take a look at how much overlap there is between VTI and VOO, we see right off the bat that 501 of VOO's holdings, basically 99.4% of that fund, are already in VTI. Which if we think about this logically, VTI is a total stock market index. So it's basically all U.S. stocks together in one fund. Whereas VOO is the S&P 500 index, which is generally the largest 500 companies in the U.S. So it makes sense that the largest 500 companies would also be in the total stock market index. Hopefully that makes sense. And so to that point, you might be thinking, hey, it's okay if they overlap because VTI has 3,000 other stocks in it that it holds. So who cares if the 500 overlap? Well, yes and no, because technically you're correct, but instead of just number of holdings that overlap, what we really need to understand is overlap by weight. Overlap by weight shows us how much of each fund is the same in terms of holding and weight percentage. So for example, when looking at VTI and VOO, Microsoft has a 5.8% weight in VTI and a 6.7% weight in VOO. So the overlapping weight is 5.8% because that's the exact amount of Microsoft that exists in both funds. Now, if you go down the list of all the overlapping holdings and add up the overlap weight, you get the overlap by weight number. So what that means is that VTI and VOO are roughly 86% the same fund. And that 14% that's left is a difference in weight of those top 500 or so holdings. And then the rest is the total allocation of those other 3,000 plus holdings, which really don't add up to much more than 10% of the weighting max. But the point is that when you invest in VTI and VOO both, you're basically investing into the same thing, at least 86% of the same thing. Okay, but what about VGT? Well, 293 of VGT's holdings, about 98%, exist in VTI, but they only have an overlap by weight of 26%. And when we compare VGT to VOO, we see that only 65 of VGT's holdings, about 21%, exist in VOO. But in terms of overlap by weight, it's 28%. So what that says is that even though the total number of holdings that overlap with VTI is much higher, the overall overlap is generally lower than it is with VOO. And if you think about it like this, it makes sense since VOO is going to have slightly higher weights to the top tech names than VTI will. And those will match up with the even higher weights that exist in VGT. So the overall overlap by weight should be slightly higher, which it is. Okay, so there's been a lot of numbers and percentages, and you're probably wondering, what should you even be taking away from this exercise? The primary takeaway is that it's critical to know how much overlap the ETFs you've invested in have with each other, and potentially how much overlap they have with any individual stocks that you own. 
And if you're investing in both VTI and VOO at the same time, it's probably worth taking a look at that and asking yourself if that 14% difference is really different enough to be investing in both or if it's better to just choose one. And if you've already investing in one of those broad market ETFs that includes information technology companies, then should you be putting money into VGT at all? And the answer, of course, like always is it depends, but we're about to break down each one so that you'll be able to make that decision for yourself. When deciding between VTI or VOO, it's mainly going to be a question of comparing the total U.S. stock market to the top 500 companies in the U.S. stock market. Now, VTI is going to be slightly more diversified since it's going to have more mid and small cap stocks in it, and it's going to have a lower weighting to the top 500 companies. VOO is focused on those top 500 U.S. companies, which tend to drive the majority of the market movement. So the question of VTI versus VOO is really a question of, would you rather own the whole U.S. stock market or would you rather focus on the top 500 U.S. companies? And to know how to answer that question, you might be wondering how they actually performed. Well, let's take a look. And we're going to take a look at this by using the index fund version of these ETFs because they have a little bit more historical data. So if we look at VFIAX, which is the counterpart to VOO, and VTSAX, which is the counterpart to VTI, we see that they both started in November of 2000. And over the past 23 years or so, they've had very similar returns, but with the total market index narrowly beating out the S&P 500 index. Now on the Vanguard website, it shows the total return since inception for the total market being 417%. Versus 389% for the S&P 500. But if you look at all the more recent time frames from 10 year on down, the S&P 500 has outperformed the total market index. So what is all that about? Now I have a theory about why that is, and it has to do with the type of companies that have been created and flourished over the past 20 years. Companies like Google and Amazon have went from IPO to being top five in market cap over this 20 plus year time frame. And if we look at the top 10 companies in terms of market cap, half of them have been added to the S&P 500 within that 20 plus year time frame. You have Google, which IPO'd in 2004 and then was added into the S&P 500 in 2006. You have Amazon that IPO'd in 1997 and was added to the S&P 500 in 2005. You have Berkshire Hathaway, which was added to the S&P 500 in 2010. You have Meta, formerly Facebook, that IPO'd in 2012 and then was added to the S&P 500 in 2013. And then you have Tesla, which IPO'd in 2010 and was added to the S&P 500 in 2020. So we've had multiple companies go from IPO to being top 10 in market cap. So that definitely helps in terms of our performance for the total market index, because you have that period of time where they go from IPO to being one of the top 500 companies in the world. And that period is usually a very high growth period for companies because most never make it there, but the ones that do end up doing very well. But here's the kicker. Those companies have driven the returns of the S&P 500 ever since they got added to the index, which is why the S&P 500 has now outperformed the total market index for the past 10 years or so, because the S&P 500 has a higher weighting for those companies. So when trying to pick between VTI and VOO, the question we have to ask ourselves is this. Do you believe it's better to have exposure to small and mid cap companies that may one day become the next Amazon or Google? Or has this generation of companies done something truly unique and it's more about sticking with them long term as opposed to trying to find the next ones? So me personally, I like investing in the S&P 500 index. It's something that I've invested in for a long time. And I just personally like the idea of attaching myself to the top 500 companies in the US. So for me, that's my preference. I also think that if we're approaching a higher for longer interest rate environment, to me, the companies that should do the best are the existing winners in their industries who generate a lot of their own cash flow to invest in themselves, as opposed to needing cheap government cash or to borrow money. And in terms of diversification, I actually do think the S&P 500 is reasonably diversified for a stock portfolio, even if there's CFPs on Twitter who don't think so. But I understand why people like VTI and the total stock market index as well. And the reality is it's not going to make a lot of difference which one you pick because remember, they're 86% the exact same. So pick whichever one you want. But I do think it's important to pick one because I don't see a lot of benefit in having them both in your portfolio. There are better ways to dial in specific exposures to certain stocks. And I just think there's too much overlap between the two. Okay, but what about VGT? VGT is such a popular ETF nowadays, mainly because its returns have absolutely crushed most other popular ETFs like QQQ, SCHG, and of course, VOO and VTI. And if we look at the past 10 years, we can see this clearly with VGT more than doubling the return of the S&P 500 and even handily beating out QQQ. But like everything we do with investing, it's good for us to understand why. So first off, 45% of VGT is currently concentrated into three companies, Apple, Microsoft, 
and NVIDIA. And normally you might think that's a concern, especially if diversification is one of your main goals. But in this case, it turned out to be a really, really good thing. And that's because those three companies have done extremely well over the past decade. Apple and Microsoft have both about 5x the return of the S&P 500, and NVIDIA has about 50x the return of the S&P 500. Yes, 50x. Now, obviously, VGT is a market cap weighted index, so these three companies didn't always have 45% of the allocation. That's something that grew over time. But their outperformance and completely crushing the market overall definitely impacted the performance of VGT over the past decade. And even when you compare them to the other big three tech companies, Google, Amazon, and Meta, Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA have been the best of the bunch over the past 10 years. But wait a minute, why aren't Google, Amazon, and Meta actually in VGT if it's an information technology ETF? Because technically those companies aren't in the information technology sector. VGT only takes companies that have the official designation of being in information technology, but the others aren't in there because Google and Meta are in communication services and Amazon is in consumer discretionary. So again, another great reason to really dig into these documents for these ETFs, because it obviously helps you know what you're holding, but in this case, also what you're not holding. So clearly VGT has benefited from having the best performing companies in it over the past 10 plus years. So again, as an investor, the question we need to ask ourselves is, Will information technology companies in general continue to outperform going forward? Or was this outperformance more due to these specific companies? And will that type of outperformance continue for them specifically? Now, ultimately, you might be at this part of the video wondering to yourself, dude, who cares about any of this stuff? I just want to buy my ETFs and not worry about it. And I get that. And that's why we're going to talk about why does this even matter at all? And the reality is that for the past 10 to 15 years, you probably could have just bought your index funds and done nothing because it probably didn't matter much anyway. You could have bought just about anything and have it go up. But I think the environment that we're going to see for a while going forward may be a little different than that. And we've looked at this chart before on this channel, but it shows the S&P 500 in relation to the federal funds rate since 1980. And what you see pretty clearly is that the market that we've known for the past 20 years has benefited greatly from very low interest rates. Only twice in the past 20 years have interest rates been 5% or above. In 2006 to 2007, right before the great financial crisis hit, and then now. And before then, you'd have to go back to the 2000-2001 years before the tech bubble. And then from there, back to 1998. The point that I'm trying to make is that most of the content that I see online is people pretty much assuming that the market we've had for the past 20 years is going to be the same market we have for the next 20 years. And when I start to look at charts like these, it makes me wonder a little bit that maybe that won't be the case, which is why it's more important than ever to really understand what you've invested in and how the things you've invested in complement each other. And with as much information as we have available to us, it should be easier than ever to do that. But in some ways, it's actually harder because there's so much content that gets created and published with just lists of ETFs or stocks like they're all the same. Three undervalued dividend stocks to buy now. Five monthly dividend ETFs, blah, blah, blah. And I talk about this all the time. There's no context or nuance with any of this content. And so it's just presented as truth. And then it's up to us to be able to dig into it and figure out which parts are valuable and which parts aren't. And look, I've made videos like that too, so I'm not criticizing anyone, but the issue is that it's impossible for us to just go by what someone else says. So you'll have people out there saying their three favorite ETFs are VTI, VOO, and VGT, and people will just buy into those without understanding how they overlap or what they even are. But at the end of the day, for us as investors, we're putting our actual money on the line anytime that we buy into something. So it's worth it to take that little extra time it takes to really understand what that something is. And that way we can avoid these common mistakes that a lot of times just end up being costly lessons learned. So what do y'all think about fund overlap? Is it something that you concentrate on or is the concern just overblown? Let me know down in the comments below. Hope you guys have a great day out there. Financial independence is true freedom. So keep building and stacking wins. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.